COVID, the vaccine, and your menstrual cycle. Hi friends, I am Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI or reproductive endocrinologist. And today I am talking more about COVID, the COVID vaccine and your period. I have broken down the COVID vaccine in pregnancy and fertility, and I briefly touched on a couple of studies about your period, but I think that it's important that we just dive into this in a quick video because I am getting so many comments on social media about your period. But first, this channel is to support you so you can learn more about your body and your fertility. And if you like this, you wanna learn more, please go ahead and subscribe. There is an entire code vaccine playlist to so go check it out for other specific questions when it comes to fertility or pregnancy. When it comes to your period, it's important to understand that we call this a vital sign. So a lot of us who are OBGYNs consider the period your fifth vital sign. The reason why is it is a reflection of your hormones and how your body is overall functioning. Losing your period or having irregular periods can sometimes represent medical diseases or abnormal immune function. Therefore, we look to the period to show if everything is in homeostasis or everything is normal and the body is functioning appropriately. In general, a regular predictable period should come within a few day interval of when you would expect it to every month. It shouldn't really hop around and it doesn't tend to vary in length. In order to understand some terminology, we're going to talk about two things in this study review, cycle and menses. Menses is the actual amount of time that you're bleeding. Day number one of bleeding to the last day of bleeding, menstrual length. When we talk about the cycle length, what we're talking about is day number one of the cycle until the last day before you start your period again. So that is the length of the cycle. Normal cycles tend to be on average between about 24 to 35 days for individual people. When the vaccine first came out, there were a lot of reports on social media about abnormal periods. And this made it seem like everybody had an abnormal period and was very scary because this hadn't been reported. Those of us who are REIs or who are OBGYNs know that we see period abnormalities for a whole host of causes. So today we're going to go over two main articles. One is going to be about what happens when you get a COVID infection in your period. The second one is going to be about what happens when you get the COVID vaccine and your period. So let's start with the article about the COVID vaccine in your period. This was recently published in the Green Journal, which is one of the top journals for OBGYN. This is the Association Between Menstrual Cycle Length and Coronavirus Disease 2019 COVID-19 Vaccination. In this study, this was a prospective observational study. So one thing that was great is that this study looked at people's periods before and after the COVID vaccine, and also had a comparison group about people who did not get vaccinated. This study used a fertility tracking app called Natural Cycles. In order to be eligible for this study, you had to be between 18 and 45, and you had to record at least six consecutive cycles. So if you had the vaccine, you have to have at least three cycles seen before you got vaccinated, and then three total cycles from cycle one being when you got vaccinated on. That way we could really see if there was a change or no change. We needed to compare people to their own baseline, which was before they got the vaccination. The total number of people who were in the study was 3,959. There were 2,403 in the vaccinated group and 1,556 in the unvaccinated. Just when we look at a quick vaccine breakdown, most people got the Pfizer vaccine, followed by Moderna, and then followed by J&J. &J. The primary outcome was a change in cycle length. So again, how long your cycle was from day one of bleeding to the last day before the next period. They used the three-day average of the three cycles prior to getting the vaccine and then looked at after vaccination for the comparison. For people who did not get the COVID vaccine, cycle number four was considered the event cycle. So they looked at three consecutive cycles they recorded and then compared to after cycle four, just to account for individual variation that can exist for people who have periods. Overall, people who were vaccinated tended to have a change in their cycle length. However, this change was less than one day in length when you looked at the entire cohort of population. Therefore, that is not clinically significant. It was a change. There officially was a 0.71 day increase. That's about 19 hours. So about a 19 day change or lengthening of your cycle. The unvaccinated group 
had no change in their cycle. This is statistically significant, meaning the difference, more people who got vaccinated than unvaccinated did report some type of change, although it's not clinically significant. And when you compare with something called a histogram, looking at the distribution of the difference in cycle days reported in the two groups, you can see that they look almost identical. Looking further, the study did a sub-analysis looking at people who had what we deemed a clinically significant change in cycle length, and this would be eight days or more, so over a week from what they should expect. Both groups, vaccinated and unvaccinated, had people, and there was no statistical difference overall. 5.2% of vaccinated people had to change eight days or more, and 4.3% of unvaccinated people had to change of eight days or more. So clinically significant menstrual cycle changes do happen, but they were not different between the groups. Looking even further, what was seen is that people who received both doses of a vaccine. So if you had a Pfizer or a Moderna and you needed to get double vaccinated, you need to get the two shot series. When those both fell within the same cycle, you were more likely to have a shift in your cycle length than people who got one in one cycle and one in the other cycle. There were 358 people who received both vaccine doses within the same cycle. This group on average had a two day increase in their cycle length. So more than just 19 hours. And of this group, 10.6 had a eight day or greater shift. So when we look at the unvaccinated group, where 4.3% had a clinically significant eight day or more shift in the group that got both vaccines in the same cycle, they had a 10.6% chance of having an eight day or greater shift. Also interestingly, when you took these 358 people out of the analysis and you looked at people who got one vaccine dose in one cycle and the next dose in the next, there was no shift in cycle length between those and the unvaccinated people. So this is showing that that change in this smaller group of people who received both doses within one cycle was shifting the results to show a change for the entire group. Reassuringly, if you look at those 358 individuals who received both doses of their vaccine in what we're calling cycle four, so three observation cycles, cycle four, they got both vaccines, had a potential shift in their period. By cycle six, their period pattern was back to what it was between cycles one to three. When you look at menstrual cycle length, so menses, the amount of time you're spent bleeding, there was no difference between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated group. Although there are many reasons why you could have period disturbances, one could be a disruption of the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis, the HPO axis, especially if you look at those people who got two vaccines in one series, that means one of their vaccines would have happened early in the follicular phase and perhaps the robust immune response that occurs when your body is mounting antibodies shifted the production of hormones from the brain, therefore delaying ovulation a small amount. And that may be why those people saw a shift in their period pattern. Now, if we compare this to people who have a COVID infection, because the option isn't just get vaccinated or not, there is the risk of getting a COVID infection. This study is analysis of sex hormones and menstruation in COVID-19 women of childbearing age. So this was looking at a COVID infection and was, it was really before the vaccine was available to the general population. So this is a retrospective study looking at 237 women who had a COVID-19 infection. Their menstrual cycles were evaluated prior to their infection and after, and follicular phase hormones were tested as well as AMH. In this study, and 25% had a change in their menstrual cycle length with 19% reporting a longer cycle. So these are much higher numbers than we had reported in the vaccine study when we look at the COVID infection study. When you look at this graph right here, most people who had a COVID infection did not have a change in their cycle length. A few people had a shortened length. However, most people who had abnormalities did have a prolonged length, either by eight to 14 days, longer than 15 days or longer than a month. And this scatter plot is looking at the differences in the hormone levels. So you have FSH and LH, which remain from the brain, estrogen with progesterone and testosterone, which are made from the ovaries, and then AMH, which is also made from the ovaries and a marker of ovarian reserve. The control group is in black, and then they have divided out mild and severe COVID in red and in blue. And truly, there's no statistical difference between any of these hormone levels in people who had COVID. So having a COVID infection, especially when you're unvaccinated, may mount a really strong immune response. This can definitely interrupt the brain secretion of those reproductive hormones. There's also a stress component that has to be considered because having a COVID infection is more than just feeling bad for a day. This can last for a substantial amount of time and can be a big stressor for the brain. We also know that the endometrium can become unstable when it doesn't have constant hormone secretion or because the endometrium has immune cells in it as well, which could lead to abnormal bleeding patterns. When we take all of this together, what we find is that from a COVID infection, you have a greater chance of a cycle disruption than from the COVID vaccine. 
People who are getting the COVID vaccine may have a disruption of their cycle, but it should return to normal within one or two cycles. And those people who had both vaccine series in the same cycle did tend to have a delayed period, so a prolonged cycle length. If you are trying to get pregnant, should you get the COVID vaccine? Absolutely. This data supports there's no long-term harm to your period from getting it. If you have a cycle change, should you freak out about it? No. If you have a cycle change for more than two months, should you go get medical help? You should. Things can still happen to the body after vaccination or an infection, and if your period is persistently prolonged or irregular, you need an evaluation to make sure it's not something else. It should return to normal if it's just due to a temporary immune response or disruption of the brain and the ovary connection. If you're trying to get pregnant, I would just track your cycle maybe a little closer in that month so you can time intercourse, just knowing that your ovulation potentially could be disrupted a little bit off in the cycle. There's no data on boosters yet, but overall the American College of OBGYN I am the American Society of Reproductive Medicine and the Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine all recommend getting the vaccine when you are eligible for people of reproductive age. Therefore, you can be protected the best. There are significant consequences to getting a COVID infection in pregnancy if you're unvaccinated. I have a video talking about that as well. We want you to be safe. We want you to get boosted, be vaccinated, and get through this pandemic together. I always tell my patients I would never advocate for something that would hurt your fertility. I am here to help you get pregnant. As always, thank you so much for watching. You can follow me along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD or listen to the As a Woman podcast for more. Thanks, friends. <music>